welcome back, Rankers. It's Mobile Ghetto Time! Yay! Why am I saying yay? Because typically in these sorts of times, all our clients' rankings go up, so I'm looking forward to it. But before I get to that, I want to talk to you a little bit about this. This is an internet conference. It's essentially it's an e-commerce conference. It's called the uh, PISA, or Professional eBay Sellers Alliance Conference, but it's essentially it's e-commerce. You get, not only do you get eBay in there uh, talking about mm, trends, you get Australia Post, you get Alibaba, you get all these fantastic speakers. This is about my sixth year, I think. And I do a bunch of workshops, we're exhibiting this year. Um, and we ho host some panels and stuff, but it is the best e-commerce conference in the country, bar none. I've already been to a few this year. I've got another one in a couple of weeks. This one is sensational. I learned so much from this, not only from the speakers and the other exhibitors, but I learned it from the attendees by networking and talking to these people about their businesses, what they're up to, what challenges they face. It is an incredible conference and I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's on the Gold Coast at the end of May. Uh, go through and uh, go to internetconference.com.au and go and have a look because they have some tremendous speakers. Now, if you are going, I do have a... Uh, a discount code, but keep this one under your hat. S T E W five zero. Don't tell anyone else. You can use that. You get fifty bucks off. Thank you very much. Uh, go along and make sure you book. Five weeks away. Get on it. Right. What I wanted to talk to you today about, of course, was Mobigen, but I wanted to talk to you about the five top Mobigen myths. Dong dong dong. I'm going to put some reverb on that. Now, why? Well, there's been a lot of press over this, obviously, and I've been generating a bit of it, uh, but a lot of it is wrong. And there was an article in Fairfax uh, today, Fairfax is Sydney Morning Herald and The Age, uh, which are news sites, and basically there are a few inaccuracies in it. And not only that, but well, there's a... There's a a group on Facebook, an SEO group and PPC group on Facebook. And we've been having a few discussions and back and forth there. And then I've also read a couple of other stories from overseas, read stuff on Twitter and read some scaremongering stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, stuff that's just simply untrue. And I wanted to address a few of them today. Because one of the biggest ones is that 21st of April, it gets rolled out. Actually, no, not necessarily. So what Google has said, and specifically John Mueller, who is, uh, runs regular Hangouts on behalf of Google for uh, Webmaster Central, he has said that, look, 21st of April is the drop-dead date. You need to be ready by the 21st of April. However, it may not hit on the 21st of April. It might get rolled out, it might get staged, it might get, some countries might get it first, other countries might get it next. And in case you don't know what I'm talking about with this mobigeddon nonsense, it's basically a big mobile update. If you're not mobile ready, you're going to suffer, pretty much. Uh, so that's, that's a, a really big one. And obviously, the other thing, 21st of April, US time. So I'm recording this on the 21st of April, Australian time. And guess what? It hasn't hit. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, 21st of April, US time, is your get ready date. You need to be ready by that date. Second big myth that I saw today was you'll get booted from the index if you're not mobile ready. No, not the case at all. What will happen is, and uh, Gary Ill said that, and I think it was Jen Slegg from the SEMpost.com. Excellent site, love that site. Great news site, get on it. Uh, she reported that Gary had said that actually there's probably going to be two indexes. We're working on it at the moment. We're working on a separate mobile index and a separate desktop index. So you won't get booted from either of those indexes if you're not mobile friendly. What will happen though is if there are mobile sites that are, if there are sites that are mobile friendly, they're going to get a bit of a boost in the mobile index only. Doesn't affect desktop. So you won't be booted from the mobile index, but I can tell you right now, if all your competitors are mobile friendly and you're not, guess what? Guess where you're going? South for the winter. So 
I'll give you an example. I think this is a really good example. So, yeah, one of the one of the conversations that uh, I was having with a few a few people in the Facebook group was about brands and those sorts of things. But I think this is a really stark example of what is possibly going to happen. If I Google IINet, which is a well-known brand here in Australia, a big, a large ISP, we can see their number one and we get all these site links. Fantastic. If I Google now broadband, which is a product they sell, they're actually number one for that organically as well. Now, great. However, they're not mobile friendly. Guess who's mobile friendly? Well, Telstra is. Guess where Telstra is going? Uh, once this mobile updates uh, rolls out in Australia. Well, they're going north. And IINet will drop below them. Uh, it will drop below this one, which is mobile friendly. Possibly won't drop below that one. That one will stay above IINet. Uh, sorry, IINet will stay above this one. And this one, and because this one's not mobile friendly, this one's not mobile friendly, and this one's not mobile friendly, which is kind of ironic because this company here apparently is in talks to acquire this company here. So what will happen in this situation, and I think I've got a bottle of vodka on this with Paul Warren. This is, this is my bed, Paul. Paul said, ah, oh, no, I think I'll be fine. I don't think so. I think what will happen is that Telstra... Uh, the new order of things on mobile search will be Telstra first, and then we'll go Optus second. I think Wikipedia will then jump above all of these guys here. And because I think Whistle Out from memory is also not mobile friendly. If you want to check that, you just grab the URL, of course. Just grab the actual URL because... Um, in the case of NAB, the National Australia Bank here in Australia, um, they, their homepage is, is mobile friendly, but of course the pages that rank for really important keywords are not. So if I go here and analyse that, it'll just tell me whether it's mobile friendly or not. I'll just wait for that to happen. And while that's doing that, we'll go back over here. So this one's not mobile friendly, this one's not mobile friendly, iinet's not mobile friendly. So iinet will stay above the other non-mobile friendly sites. But they'll drop below, certainly, these mobile friendly sites. And I think they'll go below uh, Wikipedia because they'll be mobile friendly. I haven't checked these ones as far down here. But I think the new, your new one, two, and three, let me just check that site. Still doing it. The new one, two, and three for the search broadband is going to be number one will be Telstra. Uh, number two will be Optus. Oh, Whistleout is mobile friendly. So number three will be Whistleout. So all of a sudden, we've got Telstra, Optus here, and Whistleout will be here. Then beyond that, I think we'll get Wikipedia coming in above that. And then after that, uh, possibly we may even get these. So on mobile search, iinet and the other non-mobile friendly sites below them could end up on page two. But that top five, that's how it's going to change for that particular search. Um, so you won't get booted from the index. Desktop will stay the same. All right. It will affect desktop. No way. Stop it. Stop saying that. Whoever's saying that. Stop it. It's not true. Four, responsive is the only way. So this is a design technique, right? So again, in the Fairfax article today, I'm reading that uh, M dot is not a good way to go. So you can't have a subdomain dot whatever. Not true. You can. It's just not recommended. So what a lot of sites are doing, and there's, there's massive examples of this already. So I, I do not know why. Uh, Fairfax published this. I don't know whether it's who they interviewed or the actual author or the journal who, print, who, who wrote it. But, you know, Big W, as I've shown before, is an MDOT site. They're fine. They're a large retailer here in Australia. There's plenty of really massive sites that are MDOT or, or separate sites. They're fine. 
The problem, if there is one, and there is, <laughs> is that they're hard to maintain and they're more expensive because they're a separate site. So all of a sudden you have to double the cost of maintaining websites, essentially. So that's why the main reason why it's not a good idea. The other reason it's not a good idea is that most web developers that I've seen anyway don't do it properly. Um, and they will do a cut down version of the main site at a subdomain, m.iinet or whatever it is. Responsive is the best way, but it's certainly not the only way. Responsive is the best way is because it's probably cheaper, it's the most widely accepted, uh, supported on, on all different devices, all those sorts of things. So yes, go responsive, but it's not the only way. And the fifth biggest myth that I've heard is that we're scaremongering, or that we're chicken little. Well, the only scaremongering here is done by the people who don't know what they're talking about. Um, like the ones who say you're gonna be booted from the Google index. So, let me give you an example. Uh, I spoke to a client this morning. They're getting about three grand off mobile devices. They're not mobile friendly. I said, you're gonna lose that three grand. He said, yeah, I know, we're working on it. We're gonna be ready, but there's a bunch of other stuff we need to do first. They're prepared to accept that cost. What I explained to them though was that you know, if you uh, were mobile ready today, uh, you're not, you wouldn't lose that three grand. Plus, our data indicates you'd probably triple your conversion rate for mobile users. So for most sites that we look at, if they're not mobile responsive, the uh, mobile customers are converting at probably, well, 75% less than the desktop, the ones that I've seen. In some cases, it's more than that. So by going mobile, you basically you're going to quadruple your revenue from mobile search. So I said you could go to 12 grand a month instead of three grand a month if you were mobile ready. That's pretty good. That's an easy thing to do because it's not gonna cost you 12 grand to get the templates done for mobile. If it does, then, oh boy. Uh, talk to me, uh, got some people I can point you at. Um, we don't, incidentally, I'm not making any money out of building mobile responsive design sites or anything like that. We don't do that. We recommend people. So there was one guy who I read and he was saying that, uh, and he set himself up as an authority in this forum and he said something to, along the lines of, oh, most people who are doing search um, on a mobile are looking for a phone number, that's all. Well, I'm here to tell you, mate, you don't know your Elbow from your armhole. It is not the case. If you, and we've got a number of retailers where we've done this. Well, I've got one, he's doing about 30 grand a month uh, through um, purely iPhones. And he's not mobile ready. So I've said to him, you know, that could go to 120 grand a month as well. If, once you get that, that mobile uh, site up and running. If you don't, you're gonna lose that 30 grand. Now you might think, the person, people who think we're scaremongering or we're saying the sky is falling, you might think that that's not a lot of money, but for most people it is, and for most businesses, it, it generally is 30 grand a month, and you know, so $360,000 a year, that's significant. So the other reason it's significant is that, and people who are saying, people who are saying that uh, so mobile search is just people looking for phone numbers, you know, because it's so hard to use and all the rest of it. Uh, just seriously, why do you think Google is making this update? Now, I agree with a lot of people who say, seriously, with the state of the devices at the moment, the mobile devices at the moment, do we really need this? Mobile devices are becoming so efficient, the screens are becoming so big, do we really need mobile responsive design? As I've said before, I'm not a fan of it at all, but they're doing it. So get on board or you're gonna lose a lot of money. Anyway, that's it for this week's show. Don't forget, head on up to internetconference.com.au, use the code STEW50, you get a 50 bucks back in your pocket. Sweet. See you next week, thanks very much. Bye, good luck.